I was just in Goodwill earlier today and found a nice collection of original PlayStation magazines from the early 2000s. This one's from 2008, 2007, another one 2008 from some older games from when I was younger that I was really into and wanted to learn more about. And there's a couple game informers thrown in here as well. I always love finding stuff like that. Things that either I wouldn't have been able to have growing up or things that I threw away way too early growing up and I'd love to reobtain. And it got me kind of thinking. I'm going to be doing some more budget gaming coverage on the channel soon. I've got a collaboration with Low Spec Gamer coming soon. I've got a really old rig, or not really old, but a few generations old rig that is on the very low end that I think you can do some decent gaming with that I want to cover. I'm doing the Ryzen 2200G APU build that is considered budget, and I want to integrate a little bit more of that into the channel because there's some really fun stuff you can do with there, and of course the Windows XP rig that I built. And so in this video, I wanted to talk about and provide what I consider to be five ways you can be happy with budget gaming. And I don't want that to sound condescending because I don't mean it that way at all. It's one of those things where a lot of media coverage, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of content is focused on consumerism, buying the high, the brand new, whatever is newest or highest end products and not really giving a whole lot of attention to the lower end things. And that can lead to you actually, you know, not feeling like you have an adequate enough setup or a good enough gaming experience based on what other people say or what they, they lead you to expect to experience, and I don't think that's okay, and I always have a problem with that, so hopefully this can help with the, that a bit, and maybe not. I do have some cool, I'm, I'm gonna have a couple videos showcasing some games you can run on lower end hardware that are still new and fun, things like that, so let's jump in. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. So first and foremost, and these are in no particular order, these are just five things, but first and foremost, if you need a computer to game on, like if you only have a console, or you don't have anything at all, or you have a family PC but they won't let you spend enough time on it without having your own, and you're allowed to have your own in your room, or, you know, if you need a PC, ask extended family members, post to Facebook that you're looking for it uh, at family gatherings or holidays, ask around and just plant the seed that if people get rid of their older computers, you would like them instead of throwing them away to give them to you. They're going to be a lot more comfortable with that than trying to give it to anyone else because a lot of people, a lot of families, and especially in my family, I've discovered my family has always stored computers because they want to be able to destroy the hard drive or whatever to keep their data secure but never have. And so they feel much more comfortable giving it to me who can wipe it and who isn't going to leak their data and things like that. And I have found that most families usually have a couple older computers lying about. And I have a couple specifically I'm going to be covering soon. But growing up, that is how I got all of my computers. I had lots of desktops and hardware by simply getting things whenever my family members upgraded. It, it wasn't new things. It wasn't the newest computers, but it was computers I could work with and learn. Similarly, computers on the side of the street, uh, local Facebook marketplace listings, Craigslist. You can get, I'll be covering soon, you can get refurbished or... Uh, surplus auction stuff from schools and businesses whenever they get rid of their little HPs and Dells from the businesses and the computer labs and things like that. Those on eBay are really cheap. There's always a way to get cheap computers, which is a great starting point. And then you can do a little upgrading from there if you want before buying like a big computer. Usually a really good starting place to get started with PC gaming. The same could be said for monitors. And this I find to be actually a little more important is that you can usually get some of the original generations of LCD monitors for cheap or free, either from people throwing them away, getting rid of them, family members who don't need them, or at Goodwills even, they still sometimes have them. And they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna be four by three or lower resolution. They're gonna be like 1280 by 1024 or 1366 by 768, things like that. That's okay. You're gonna be able to run that better on a budget gaming rig than you would a fancy 1080p monitor anyway. Like that's a good thing to get a lower resolution monitor. Similarly, my preferred option is to go with CRTs. These are the big box tube monitors. Even if you haven't used one, I think you could develop an appreciation for them if you have the space. Space is, of course, an important consideration. And while I've always been fairly gung-ho about getting big things, I want to be sensitive to that. If you don't have the space for it or could get in trouble for that, not the route for you. But if you have the space for a big box monitor, CRTs are like hidden gems in terms of like getting good monitor quality. 
I made a video in the past about why CRT TVs are great and similar reasons apply here in that you have deeper, basically, if you've ever looked into the difference between TN and IPS panels and monitors, IPS are the ones with the better colors, the deeper blacks, things like that. The same can be said of CRTs. CRTs have much deeper blacks, the color saturation is better, the contrast is better, and especially compared to really old or low resolution LCDs, they just outright look better, period. They're sharper, they're, they're deeper, they're, they're just so much better. And you can, if you have a graphics card that has proper analog VGA out, you can get high refresh rate gaming on a CRT for free or cheap. So if you want a 120 hertz monitor on a budget rig, you can do that with the CRT. 1024 by 768 or 800 by 600 at 100 to 200 hertz is amazing for older and lower end games. And a lot of games will support that. If you feel performance is slow, I will say that saving up for a solid state drive, a SSD for your boot drive for where your main operating system runs can drastically improve the speed of literally any PC. Like this is my, that, that has always been my slow, my biggest irk moment where I want to throw an older or slower PC out the window is basically a lot of older computers have really slow or busted hard drives where they sit at 100% usage the whole time and Windows and you can't do anything. Like if, if your computer is purely not responding, it's more often than that something like that. And so saving up for even just like a little $60 SSD from like 2011 can do wonders to improving your speed. You might have to reinstall Windows or clone your Windows portion over and then use your hard drive for normal pictures, documents, game storage, and your computer will run so much faster. Requires a little saving up, but if you need like a key upgrade to the day-to-day -day responsiveness of your computer, depending on age, of course, solid state drive is the way to go. I even had a video last year where I upgraded a Windows Vista laptop where it was slow as can be in Windows Vista. And while moving over to like Linux or something was a little bit faster on the whole, just installing the SSD made Vista itself substantially faster because that drive usage was just killer. A big thing, which is of course a mindset shift and something you just have to accept if you don't have the budget for certain games is to not always look at the big budget triple A, the you know most expensive brand new games when it comes to playing because you're on low end hardware, you're mostly not going to be able to play them. Like some exceptions of them running fairly well, but for the most part, you need to look at games that are more made to run on budget hardware. And there's a lot of good ones. For example, instead of playing the brand new Call of Duty, if it doesn't run on your system, you can play Iron Sight, which is a free to play currently in beta. This is not sponsored by the way. This sounds like an advertisement, but it's not. A free to play, basically Call of Duty. Like whenever we jumped in, I jumped in with my buddy BBK Dragoon and Diddy, we jumped in, it felt right off the bat like the magic of the arcadiness of Call of Duty. It has a little bit of movement lag issue. If you watch Battle Nonsense's net lag review of the game, like most of the hit detection and stuff is really, really good, even on slower connections, but they have some movement lag issues that hopefully they'll work out soon. But it is basically Call of Duty, but free to play. And it's a lot of fun. And it scales down to run on a lot of things. Same things with a lot of the esports -y games, uh, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, those kinds of games, all Rocket League, scale down to lower in hardware a lot better and give you little resolution scalers too, so you can run it even lower if you need to. Um, older games, going to GOG.com and playing some older games, playing retro games, playing games meant for the generation of the hardware that you're in, and just generally a lot of indie games run really well on low end hardware too. If you do want to run specific games on really, really low end hardware, I do recommend checking out my buddy Low Specs Gamers website, well, not website, YouTube channel, where he does, he goes like super extreme with it. Like there's a difference between running on lower end hardware and some of the stuff he does where he takes like laptop graphics chips and little compute stick graphic, you know, processors where they can't run anything and cranking the settings all the way down. And so he can help you run games on just about anything. So I definitely recommend checking him out. Lastly, I, I, I will just say to avoid forums, Reddit, big groups where you have the PCMR elitists of gaming because it's not worth it. Like a lot of those people are going to put you down, put anyone down to make themselves feel better about their setup. And you don't need that. You don't need someone in your life telling you your setup or your gaming experience is not good enough because that is, especially with PC gaming, that is the glory of PC gaming is anyone can experience it and in any way that they like. And so avoid those situations because it's going to do nothing but make you feel bad and there is no reason to. 
So this was a little bit more of a weird discussion -y video. Like I said, I, I'm hoping to segue into some more content that I've been working on that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. Hit the like button if you... <laughs> Hit the like button if you did enjoy. Get subscribed for more awesome tech content. Leave your thoughts in the comments below if you have some advice to people who are trying to figure out their way into budget PC gaming. And I will actually have a video. I have a whole huge box of these PlayStation mags that I got from a recent convention as well. On top of these. I will have a video coming on those, by the way, if you're curious soon as well. And I'll see you in the next video. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options via donor box, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind the scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com slash support to learn more and join us on Discord at eposvox.com slash Discord. Thanks.